in the grand scheme of things, I'm considered new on social media. New. A lot of people have been on here doing what all they do way before I even knew that people were capable of doing all the things that they do. All of this was oblivious to me. But when I got on YouTube, I learned the ropes. I learned that there are certain individuals or groups of individuals working together behind the scenes or not that will do any and everything for a view, for a monetization, and for a Google AdSense check. Now, mind you, these people never get picked up, you know, for sponsors. You know, you never see anyone sponsoring them. You never see any organization standing behind them. But there's always this little thing on their about section about if you want to hire me for this or hire me for that, here's my business email. So it's not rocket science. The motivation behind their every single calculated move, calculated step. Now, like I said, prior to, prior to getting on YouTube, all of this was oblivious to me. Now, if I had to guess, you know, a lot of people have been on here collecting checks over the past five or ten years. You know, regardless of the amount, you know, it's, it's I guess it's a, a part-time income for them. Or I guess in some cases a full-time income for them. Or a growing business. Or they're considered a LLC. Or they're considered self-employed. Or whatever it is. You know. No. You're getting an I-9. You are a contractor. You may be an independent contractor. But your check relies on Google AdSense and it relies on YouTube and it's based on views, it's based on subscribers, it's based on clicks and all this whole plethora of things that make up social media. But something that I picked up on and believe me I picked up on this last year, last year I picked up on this. But certain things have gotten so out of control that there's really nothing you can do about it. It's up to the families of these victims to step forward and make a change. Because leave it to the content creators of this content and leave it to the viewers of this content, this will continue. And the more gruesome and outlandish the tragedies and the deaths are, the more views and clicks and checks will be generated. Now, I have noticed that there are some channels, this is, this is specifically all that they do. They don't do anything but tragedies. And the more gruesome the tragedy or the more gruesome the death, the more the views. Now, these people care nothing about these victims' families. They care nothing about these victims' kids or their friends, their schoolmates, their loved ones, any of that. But let it be one of their kids or one of their mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or cousins or friends or whatever it'll be a whole different story I'm guessing I don't know it may not even be a whole different story you know I mean who knows there may be people right now that are glued to their phones looking for a tragedy or a death to happen so they can record it 
So they can be the first person to record it, the first person to upload it, the first person to commentate on it, and the first person to get views on off of it. You never know. Uh, now I did pick I did see this today. I had never saw this prior to today. I decided to report on it because it's relevant. Um, I'm going to play the video. It's from a news channel. But first I want to look at the I want y'all to see the comments. I want y'all to see the comments that some of the people leave about now the video was about the family is trying desperately to get the video of their daughter's Facebook Live death taken down off of YouTube and social media. And the grandmother is concerned, not that she even needs a reason to be concerned, just the fact that they don't want it out there should be enough. But I don't know, maybe she has to feel like she has to come with an, up with an explanation for it. Um, the victim had, had a young baby. I guess the grandmother is thinking about this young child. How she never wants that young child to see that video online on these social media platforms. But leave it to... And that's why I say, you know, a lot of the viewers, in my opinion, are just as sick as the people, if not sicker, than the people that are actually walking around with their phones looking to record these tragedies and deaths. You know? Um, but I'm going to show y'all some of these, some of these, um, you know, comments, you know. Here's one I found particularly disturbing. It says, keep the video up. It's a learning lesson. This was three months ago. It got five likes. And I don't even know what the reply is. And I guess somebody had, had the courage enough to ask how. You know, it's certain people, you know how people are in like a mental institution Certain things that come out of these people's mouths, it doesn't warrant a comment. Because you know by what they're saying, it tells where their mental state is, you know. Um, and I just look at a lot of them as being locked up in mental institutions, but yet there's no bars on the windows. The doors are unlocked, so these people can just come and go as they please. You know, and they come to social media with all of their madness, you know. Um, and of course, you got people like this that are going to, they, they don't care about the story, you know, they're thinking about sex, you know. It's just, it's kind of sick, you know. It's kind of, it's, it's really sick to see where the mental is for a lot of people on here, you know. And you have to ask yourself, if these people are so fascinated by all this death and video deaths and all that stuff, I wonder how they would feel if it was their own child or their own mother, you know? And I can honestly sit here today and say I really don't think it would make a difference to these people. I don't think it would make one bit of difference. And um, it's the culture. It's the YouTube culture. It's the social media culture. It's that culture that is desensitizing human morality. And I personally believe it's that type of culture that is going to continue to drive more and more tragedies, more and more deaths. Because you got people like the people in the comments section, you got people in in these people's real lives that instigate these things. They instigate them to make a tragedy or to make a death so that it can get on social media. So that in some sick way 
they can get notoriety or get the spotlight shined on them because of someone else's tragedy and someone else's death. And to me, I don't see how you can get any sicker than that. You know, that's why I'm able to see all of this for what it is because here it is, I see a sick person at the helm of all of this and then I see all of these other sick people gathered around this person, you know, to hear about this tragedy or this death, to see the video about this death, to hear the song and dance that's going to be created around this tragedy or this death, you know, to see the show that these people are going to put on around this stuff, you know. But there's a saying, you know, it's called what goes around comes around. And believe it or not, everybody on social media isn't sick like a lot of these people are. You know, you got certain people that are vigilantes, you know, they see the things that go on and they move in silence. The things that they do, they move in silence, you know. Um, and they make sure that they get justice for either the victim or the families or, you know, you never know. And who knows, some of these people could be complete strangers to these victims and these families. And a lot of them move in silence, you know. And it's so easy for someone to get on here and just, you know, sensationalize somebody's tragedy, sensationalize somebody's death, all, you know, for a song and a dance, putting on a show, you know, to bring spotlight and attention to themselves, to eventually bring views, clicks, likes, Google AdSense checks, and I guess eventually they want a sponsor to pick them up. You know, um, it's a sick thing. It's a very, very sick thing. But the scary part is um, a lot of these people that are doing these things, they, I, I really think, I think they know right from wrong, but they don't care. And you've got hundreds of thousands of people that do not care, that do not give a damn. And I just think ultimately it's going to be a situation where a lot of these people are probably going to end up hurting each other. They're going to hurt one another for a view and a click, you know. Um, certain situations on here, my heart goes out to certain people, you know. If I wake up tomorrow and a vigilante decided to go after a content creator on here that all they do is sit around and mock death and look at death and tragedy as a coin and an opportunity to put on a show, a song and a dance, to gain notoriety, to capitalize in any shape, form, or fashion off of another person's death or tragedy and they choose to handle that as they see fit. I mean, all I, all I have to say about it is what goes around comes around, you know? Some people I don't think will ever get it. They will never get what they're doing to other people until someone does the same thing either to them or someone in their immediate family. And just like there are sick people that comment 
there's a lot of sick people that don't come in at all. You know, they start finding out where you are. They start setting wheels into motion to be a vigilante, you know, and you never know where they're going to strike from, what they're going to do, you know. But the world needs vigilantes. The world need. Can you imagine a world where you only had all of these sick people that are just thriving off of tragedy and death? And at the, you know, and the driving force behind this are these content creators just out, you know, trying to gather and capitalize on as much death and tragedy as they can, regardless of whose it is. You know, in my opinion, certain situations, you need vigilantes to go after people like this or these people's family members so that they can finally see once and for all how it feels to be on the other side of what you're doing to everybody else. Yeah, vigilantes are needed. They are definitely needed in this world to deal with the people that there's no other way that they can be stopped in what they do. Here's the video and I'm going to end it after this. Family members in South Georgia are asking social media sites to please take down. Let me turn the volume up so y'all can hear it. Let me start it over. But yeah, we definitely need vigilantes. You know, to deal with these people. Family members in South Georgia are asking social media sites to please take down video showing the killing of 20-year-old Tynesha Hammond. Now, she was live on Facebook in Macon when she was gunned down, and it's been viewed hundreds of thousands of times, and the family wants it to stop. Let me check in on you. This is the last moments of 20-year-old Tynesha Hammond's life. Just days before Christmas and less than a block from her mom's home, Tynesha was streaming live on Facebook as she cruised with some of her friends. Can we check me She left her baby boy, Amari, behind as she enjoyed the night. Yeah, I have him a part for my birthday. Yeah, I want to go. Then all of a sudden... Shots ring out and you never hear Tynesha's voice again. She was dead. Facebook eventually took the gruesome video down, but not before it was downloaded and featured on YouTube, as you see right here, and also uploaded to flyheight.com, a site full of provocative user uploaded videos. I couldn't wrap my mind, not her, not Tynesha. Despite the family's wishes, for months, the video of Tynesha's last living moments remained on the site, racking up more than 200,000 views, and on some YouTube pages, it's been viewed tens of thousands of times. After the family contacted Fly Height, they eventually took it down. But it seems to be growing on other social media sites. Something family member Sarah McMiller doesn't want Tanisha's son, Amari, to see. Amari's not going to be a baby for him. <laughs> Her son's going to have a social media one day. I would hate for him to come across their video. All right, so to be honest with you, if a family really wants to protect Amari from seeing those videos in the future, they're going to have to continuously monitor social media sites and then ask the publishers to take it down. Yeah. And, you know, I really have to ask myself, you know, a lot of these social media sites, they make money off of this stuff. You know. Um, so, it's a... It's a double-edged sword, you know. On one hand, you got this overwhelming uh, need for all of this tragedy and death. And then you have content creators that, you know, just feed on this stuff constantly. You know, and you have to ask yourself, what is the psyche, the mental psyche of a person that that's all that they feed, that they feed into their subconscious is tragedy and death. You know, 
I mean, to me, it doesn't get any sicker than that. And then on top of it, you got these social media platforms that have this blank canvas that you can just come on and post all this stuff. And the whole thing just goes awry, you know. And then the algorithms feed off of it. There's money generated off of it. There's views, there's clicks, there's subscribers, you know. It seems like no one is outraged by any of it because it's not their family. It's not their kids. It's not their parents. So nobody gives a damn. The next time you're on YouTube, look at these channels' content. Look at how they make a show out of these tragedies, out of these deaths. They make a song and dance out of it. You know, it's a big spectacle. It's an opportunity for them to get on a stage and put on a performance. with a lot of people rallying around them about this tragedy or this death because it's none of their relatives. You know. But there's something called karma. There's something called karma that deals with people like that. You know. They don't care. These people don't give a damn about these deaths. They don't give a damn about these tragedies. All they want is for the next one to be worse than the one before. They want them to be incrementally worse, incrementally more tragic, incrementally more devastating so that they can get incrementally more likes and views and subs. Because those likes and views and subs are just that important to them. That a grieving family is irrelevant when it comes to that. That's why vigilantes are needed. We need vigilantes in this world because without them I don't see that we're going to have a world in the next 20 to 50 years I don't see it happening we need vigilantes is what we need 